Hello, my beautiful Pisces here with a reading for the Pisces tribe. Anyone who has Pisces in their sun sign or moon sign, rising sign or Venus sign, this reading could resonate with you. Uh, my friends, I am doing a different format this week and I'll probably do it for the foreseeable future. Um, it is what I call a freestyle or free form um, type of reading. And um, it's it's really fun for me to do. It's, it's what I think I do really well. It brings me a lot of joy um, to work in this creative way with this tool of tarot. And I hope that you give me a chance to um, bring this in front of you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I'm looking out now over the next seven to ten days or two week period of time um, and and we will dig into these energies just so I, like i do in the extended readings i'll dig deeper into what i see here let's go ahead and get started pisces and see what this energy is for you as you move into the um the immediate future the immediate future here for pisces for the pisces tribe for the pisces tribe Pisces, I just looked outside the window. Um, I live in the country and um, I see in my horizon the fir trees that are around on my horizon and above the fir trees, above the fir tree line is a beautiful, gorgeous moon with no clouds in the sky. And I think it's just beautiful to um, do this reading for you with such a powerful, uh, 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 such a powerful moon um, above my head at this time and above all of your heads at this time. Um, well, some of our heads, depending on where the earth is rotating, but um, it, it is a beautiful moon that I saw outside my window. Um, I should go outside and look at it. Maybe I will when I'm done. All right, we're almost done here. Look at the four of wands flipping over as well. All right, let's see what's here, Pisces. Let's see what's on the table. Welcome to the table, my dear friends. It's wonderful to have you here. I am excited to be here. Let's see what's here for you. Two of Swords. Strength. Hierophant. Magician. All right, so we're going to be digging deeper into these readings, into these energies. Um, but first, I want to summarize what I see here, and then we'll start digging deeper and seeing see what we can find in these energies. There's usually little treasures that, that come out for us that, that are fun to find. Um, so this group of Pisces, this tribe of Pisces people, um, might, might not apply to everybody because we're, we're all different ages. We're moving through different types of experiences. Um, we're living in different parts of the world. So... It, it all just kind of depends on where you are in your life, in your life path. But we, we do have a group of Pisces here that are, um, you know, you're, you're working to realize something. You're working to find the truth of something. Um, you could have a stalemate. You could have a situation where, you're, you know, both sides of the situation have merit. Both sides have merit. Both options are okay. You might have two situations where there's there's an ambiguance. What's the word? Um, ambiguity. I, I'm not sure. There's an ambiguous quality of both ways of thinking about it. You might need to find some more information about both ways. Um, I, I think you're you're really coming into something. You're you're looking for a strategy. You're looking for a decision. Uh, and and this is a process where. Um, it's going to require you to really be fully in your emotions. You you could be really thinking. Um, you you could be doing a lot of thinking with the mind because you could have a lot of fear in the heart center. And when there is a lot of fear in the heart center, sometimes the mind will take over, right? Sometimes the mind sa says, "Oh, heart, you're breaking. Your heart is breaking. Let me start to take over. Let me start thinking. Let me start." analyzing let me start being rational about this um so so i do feel like there could be a merging of the mind center and the heart center we'll dig deeper into this energy i still feel like it's kind of a vague energy it's kind of swirling around you it might be in the yin energy what you could be really struggling with is a is your understanding is is maybe a belief your understanding of something your identity around something it could be around self-care it could be around 
rest and revitalization and it, it's a yin. I think for many of you, it's a yin. You might want to look up yin energy. It is something that we say a lot, but we sometimes it's hard to really know what it is. Um, it is a it, yin energy is, is an energy where Pisces, um, when I'm in a yin energy and I'm learning to be more in yin as I move forward and, and make changes in my life because I've spent a lot of my own personal life being in a masculine energy because I've had to really rely on only myself for much of my life. And um, I had to get out and, and, and take action. And I am only learning at this part in my, of my life how to take care of myself. And I'm starting to understand what it feels like to be in a yin energy. And it feels damn good. It feels really nice. And I'm starting to really enjoy it. Um, being a woman instead of being a fighter, being a warrior. So, so for some reason, this is flowing through. This information is flowing through. So it does have something to do with the yin for many of you. It has to do with being at home and loving home, feeling the, feeling the sanctity of home. But there is some sort of a conflict here, and we'll get into that. So, so we're going to go deeper into this energy. There, there is something here that's a conflict with this truth. Um, you do have the strength energy here, so I think you're you're pushing through. You're pushing through, Pisces. This is so interesting. Your energy is deep. I mean, that's why I like to do this digging deep. That's why I like to do this kind of freestyle because we can really get in here and get into the nuts and bolts of this. Um, I, you're really pushing through. You have a lot of strength in you, Pisces. You're able to, to move through this. It's not going to stop you. It's not going to stop you, but you are going to swim in the waters just a little bit. And that's something that you can do. That is your natural ability. That's where you get your, your, your genius is from the waters. That's where you get your, that's what your heart center needs to be alive. And for you to be, um, all you can be is to be able to swim in these waters. Although at this time, it might feel like it's not the time, it's not the place. But here it is where we're swimming in these waters and we're in this yin energy, right? Um, and so you're pushing through, you're, you're making it work. You're, you're doing what you need to do. And I think you're doing it in, in the beauty that you are, Pisces, and with compassion, with care you know, with consideration for yourself and for others. Um, so I really see you pushing through. Now, it, there is something here that you're working to, to construct. It's something that has to do with structures and formality. Um, it has to do with guidelines. It, it, it could, um, whatever you're working to invent or create in your reality, um, it, it is something that the systems around you, the people around you will be able to work with. They will be able to use. They will be able to participate in some way. If you're writing something, it will be something that people will be able to resonate with. If you're creating a product, it will be a product that people will be able to, to use and to implement in their life. If you're advancing a service, it's going to be something that is very much needed. So you're working now as you're inventing something, as you're working to create something in your reality, this thing that you're working on, this, this energy that you're, that you've got going, you know, that you've got creating is going to begin to move out into a structured society or in structures somehow in your exterior world. And it's going to merge and blend and it's going to advance that world or that environment in some way. It's going to find the, the environment outside of you to be helpful for it. So you're creating something that is going to be, it's going to flow with your environment. It will enhance it. It will bring it into an improved space, but it will flow with it. It will be an organic success that this is what you're working to bring to fruition. All right, so let's dig deeper now and see what we can find. I, I'm interested in this Two of Swords. I think there's a lot here. This Hierophant energy is very interesting too. Um, I think the Magician is going to be interesting to go into. So let's start with the Two of Swords and see what we can get here with the Two of Swords. We have the lover's energy. See what I mean? Like, uh, 
It's like we've got to open the book, don't we? We've got to open the book to see what's inside. Super fun, Pisces. Three of Swords. Knight of Swords. Okay, I'm going to dig here. So we're going to dig just a little bit and see what we can find. I'm going to take these energies and put them off to the side. Here is this darn two of swords. And let's dig down into these energies here and see what we can find. So there is a partnership here. Now, the, the lover's energy can be two different things that I'm feeling here. And I think for many of you, it will be two different things. It's going to talk about the balance within you, the yin versus the yang or the feminine or the masculine energy. And it, it, it does have something to do with feminine energy and masculine energy in your exterior world. So it's like a mirroring effect. So there is some kind of a partnership here. And we know when we have balance within ourselves, when we are taking care of ourselves, when we are finding time to find our own sanctuary and our own peace, when we're eating the right foods, um, when we're eating foods that help the yin energy, when we're eating foods that help the yang, when we're going into action and satisfying the masculine, but taking care of ourselves to satisfy the yin, we're, we're balanced and we're powerful, right, within ourselves. And we're a perfect partner when we're like that. We when we're balanced and when we're forward moving and when we're taking care of ourselves in, in the in the most beneficial way for from from both perspectives within us we are a very powerful force in the world around us so you have this strengthening here or this focus on your inner um, on your inner health but you also have some sort of a partnership going on in the world around you some sort of a partnership that when the energy is good and when um, times are good and when all the components of this puzzle of this machine are working um, in, in a powerful way. This is a machine that cannot be stopped. This is a force that is to be reckoned with, right? But when there are pieces of this machine that need to be greased, that need to be oiled, that need to be replaced, that need to be cared and maintained, and there is not the work going into it, this machine begins to fall apart and this partnership can start to frazzle. It can start to go into disarray, right? So something has happened here in your experience where um, something in your outer world has started to erode, whether it is, whether it's within you or it's with another person or if it's within your environment, there is some sort of, of eroding here that has caused a bit of pain, a bit of anxiety or a bit of heartache. Um, and I think with the two of swords and the three of swords here, um, there is some kind of truth to be realized in this. Where does the responsibility lay? Well, I can tell you if you have the lover's energy, it is a shared responsibility. It is a shared responsibility to care for this. It is a shared responsibility to build it. And it will be a shared pain when you have the lover's energy. So there is some truth to be, to be reckoned with. There is some truth to be realized by both of these energies here. Now, sometimes when I work with my own yin and yang energy or feminine and masculine energy, I'm saying this out loud. And I know that your guidance teams are here as well, listening to this. And when I move my focus over to, um, the left side of my body, um, I can ask my yin energy or my feminine energy how it's feeling. Try this sometime. Um, I know that I'm stepping out here and being vulnerable with this information, but this is something that my team has taught me to do. And I think your team is here as well. And um, they, they, if it's meant for you to use this tool that I think this tool could be available to you with a little practice. Um, you, What I do is I move my um, focus um, over to the yin side of my body and I ask it, how is it feeling? And I do this when it's very quiet, when I'm in a meditation and there will be thoughts that come forward to me. Like I, I'm really tired. I really would prefer to spend tomorrow um, resting or I really would like to, um, to enjoy myself and to have fun tomorrow, to do something that inspires me tomorrow. And then I can move over to the right side of my body 
the masculine side of my body and I can ask the masculine, how are you feeling? And if I'm really quiet, I can hear um, the thoughts coming forward from the more active side of me. We just want to get going on this. Why do we have to wait? I'm worried about money. I, I really need to get going on this. I really need to do something. So sometimes inside of us, there are conflicting energies. And that's why the lover's energy, when we can spend time um, understanding what the feminine energy within us is needing and what the masculine energy within us is needing, we can really start to build our, our own um, inner inner strength. So that is a tool that I've been taught to use from my team, um, but then realize I am also clairaudient, so I can hear. So not everyone is able to do this, although I think um, there is much more capacity um, out there than is realized by many of you. So um, if, if that sounds interesting to you, spend some time, because Pisces, I think that you have, um, those of you that are connecting with me, I think that we have, an, uh, we have a connection, and there is a reason why you're connecting with me. And I think that you have a great ability um, for um, to really expand your capacities in the world of psychic energies and of psychic abilities. So, you know, if you have the willingness or when the time is right, feel free to f to try that tool. Um, and I'll try to start being more open with some of the strategies that I that I have been taught. I will try to be more open and be more helpful with that as I move along, because I am working with my own ego here. I am working with my own ego and my own enlightenment, and I am going through my own um, transition into being a more empowered um, reader. And, and in that process, um, I, I hope to be helpful um, with some certain tools that I have found that have helped me. Now, that said, um, there is some truth here to be realized. And I feel like um, there is some sort of energy coming forward that's going to help with this because we have the Knight of Swords. So I'm going to dig deeper into, into these energies. Again, I'm going to go deeper because we want to know more about this Knight of Swords. Is this something that you're going to be bringing forward? Is this something that you're going to be saying? Or is someone coming towards you with some truth? Let's dig in and see what we can see. And it might be different for everyone here, but it looks like there's an energy of truth that's coming very quickly in. So I, I do feel that while you're looking for the truth now and you maybe don't have it at this point, it's going to be quickly here. It might surprise you. It might be hard to hear. It might surprise another person. It might be hard for them to hear. But I do feel like the truth is going to be here and it's going to be direct and it's going to be strong. Um, I think it's something that you are looking for because the strength energy is here, the higher fun energy here, and the magician is here. I don't think you really have time to deal with vagueness right now because you are going into action, creating something, building structure in your life. And this could be a distraction that is causing a certain amount of distress for you. So I think in this case, this, this, this realization or this new strategy or this new understanding is going to be helpful for you. It might be hurtful with the three of swords, but it will be helpful. Look at all the swords we have here. Six swords. It's going to bring balance. It's going to bring peace. But I, it looks like you might have to go through a rapid to get to the bottom of this waterfall. And then you will have peace. It has to do with a partner. See, see how passion, passionate it is and how cool these energies are, how cool these colors are, and how passionate these colors are. Interesting, isn't it? Let's look at this Knight of Swords. Tell us more about this Knight of Swords, please. Will you please tell us, give us some indication about who might be coming forward with this energy? And we know that um, all the answers aren't going to be given in a reading. That is part of living the human experience to actually go through this and experience this so there can be learning. But I do feel that our spiritual teams are here and I do feel that they are meant to guide us and help us. Um, and so that's why we do these readings and that's why they're helpful to so many people. Two of Wands. Knight of Swords. So we're going into the Knight of Swords. Page of Swords. Let's get one more energy. See how deep we can go, Pisces. Tower. Towers in reverse. Thank goodness. Thank goodness the tower's in reverse. So I asked, who's bringing this forward? Now, that was a pretty direct question. And it's pretty hard for the tool of tarot 
um, especially when we're in a general reading to give us such a specific answer. But let's see if we can dig into this and see what what information is is being is being um, shared with us tonight, um, so that people can move forward in the in in the most empowered way. Because whatever you're creating here, I think is going to be helpful for many people. Um, in, in one way or another. And so I think that there is a consensus here that it's important now to bring this information forward as much as possible. So we do have the two of wands. Now this person that's bringing this forward is in some sort of a, um, they're, they're, they have, they have determined what the, the issue is or they're working to determine. See, we're moving now. Do you see the difference? We're moving from this realization energy. We're moving from this truth energy we're moving into a more passionate energy so whoever is coming forward whether it's you or another person or a group of people you know because these energies can go over the top of groups of people even over the tops of countries over the tops of companies right so so however you're resonating with this energy um this energy that's coming forward with this direct statement that's going to help find this truth it's going to bring the ace of swords right is creating then a scenario where there is a decision on what kind of action must be taken how to do this then how best to do this what route to take what path will be the boat most beneficial right? What path will be the most beneficial? It looks like there is a path that is considered to be generally the best way. So it's almost like there, there, there is a tendency now to consider that, that there is a, um, a favorable path, but it's not quite known. It's not all known now. Um, the devil is here too. So this could be a Capricornian energy could be, could be, um, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius as well could be Gemini here. Um, if we're looking at signs, could be Leo, could be Taurus, right? Could be any of those signs. It could be someone that's, you know, that's in the energy of those signs. But we have a lot of signs here. So I, I think that that's a, a very minor detail. Um, we, the, the devil energy is here. This tells me that there is some sort of an imbalance. Uh, and this imbalance, this situation that is not fair, that is out of sync is part of this problem. It is part of, it is part of, it is, it is having an influence at this point in time. It is having an influence of what strategy is to be used. So there's something here that is plaguing this situation, right? Whether it is a toxic relationship where one person is controlling the other or damaging the other or diminishing the other, or if it's a situation that someone is in an addiction, or if it's a situation that someone's in an illness, or just in some way out of control, this is a situation that has an edge of being out of control. And the, the, the reason that there is having to be some sort of action plan is to regain balance of whatever this imbalance is, because we have the tower here coming into the reverse, which is um, moving out of crisis, moving out of chaos, right? There is a watching kind of energy of this imbalance. The tower is in reverse, which is a beautiful thing to have happen. That means that things are beginning to settle. The foundation, the new foundation is being built again. There's a situation that's being reestablished after something was knocked to pieces. And when I say that, it's when I get into the energy of the tower in reverse, there is a little bit of anger here, I feel. Some resentment. I mean, there are some swear words that come at me out of this out of this energy. I don't need to say them because I don't want to spend too much time in this energy. We do have the tower in reverse and the devil energy. This is a very and the lover's energy. I mean, this is a very heated kind of um experience it's heated it has it has energy that's behind it right that that is pushing it forward there's still energy here that's pushing it forward but it is settling somewhat it is settling now there is a watching energy around this out of balance whatever this is 
whatever this is. Look how it's above this anxiety, illness, stress, heartbreak. And then there is the two, finding the truth of this, finding the solution for this, right? Making a decision about this. We have swords just, it, it's, it boggles the mind. It confuses the mind. It takes the mind down all kinds of interesting pathways. And so there is an energy here of just watching. There's a, there's a cynical energy. There's some resentment here. There's some underlying energies here that are pushing this forward. This is, I think this is more than one thing. Let's go into the devil energy. Who does that? We do that, Pisces. We do that. We're going into it and seeing what we can get out of this energy. You know what? I'm using a different deck. I'm going to use this deck. Let's go into the devil energy now. Ace of Swords, Page of Swords. <laughs> Damn. There's the Ace. There it is with another page, a page on the top of the page. Let's see how deep they're going to let us go here. How deep will they let us go? There's the moon energy flipping over. Hidden, hidden information, hidden behind. Information coming forward. Mystery. Emperor flipped over. Discipline, structure, control. Look at those eyes that look over the top of the ace. Look at those eyes. Can you see? It's almost eerie. Don't let me freak you out, but it's just eerie to me the way this looks. Ooh, that's kind of freaky. Look away if it's going to scare you, but look at this. Look, this is how these cards were. It's not focusing, and maybe it's on purpose that it's not focusing. Nine of Swords. Whatever is going on here in this situation, it's going to be taken care of. It's going to be resolved. But it's a situation that's caused a lot of stress and anxiety. Here's some more swords. How many swords do we have? The, math ma the mathematicians in the group can count these swords. But now we have the ace, right? So we have the nine of swords plus the ten, the, the ace, which means that this situation is coming to an end. Nine plus one, ten. Here's another one, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, 18 swords we have here. That's a lot of mental anguish. That's a lot of fear. And this can move around a partnership, a romantic partnership. This can move through a community. This can move through a workplace. This can move through a family. But the good news here is the tower is in reverse. So I think this is all beginning to settle in. Um, who's ever bringing forward this information, um, it has a choice to make, has a way to decide to go, and is, is unsure knows this person or this energy knows that this situation is coming to an end with the tower in reverse, knows that, but is watching the energy of it, watching the energy of the tower. Whatever caused this tower, this energy is still alive. So there's going to be here with the Ace of Swords, some kind of truth coming forward. And once the truth is there, once a decision is there, once the mental clarity is around this and the learning has taken place, right? Because we have two pages of swords, one right on top of each other. Um, and the learning has taken place because this is a student energy. So who is ever in this partnership, whether it's two people in a romantic situation or whether it's the world, because I'm now I'm starting to realize like this could be, I mean, if, if you're interested in world events, I mean, all of a sudden I realized just now, just, just, just now that we could be talking about something bigger. Take it as you will. You could have a situation like this going on within your own immediate relationship. 
So these are just energies. And remember, these energies can go over the top of two people, a community, a company, a city, whatever, up to the top. So there's going to be some sort of learning that takes place here. This is a learning energy. So whoever is involved with this is going to be vulnerable, right? The Page of Swords is an energy of vulnerability. It's an energy of learning and of destabilization. It's an energy of apprehension. It's an energy of stalking. When do we stalk someone? We've all done it. We've all done it in some degree or another. When do we do it? When we're feeling unsure. When we're feeling insecure. When we're feeling like something isn't right. That's when we do it. So it's not that this is the stalking energy. Let's go deeper. It's an energy of insecurity. It's an energy of vulnerability. That's why we do it. So we can call it a watching energy all we want, but we need to dig deeper and say, why is it a watching energy? Let's remove the stigma. Let's go deeper and say, this is why. So there is some sort of a decision of truth that comes forward here about this energy that's cre that created this tower. And from that truth, there is here some sort of strategy that is going to be taking place. And this strategy is going to then begin to solve this situation here. Let's look into the two of wands. I just realized time has flown and I only on the, that's okay. It's the freestyle. It's the freestyle Pisces. Page of Pentacles. So we're starting to see some, some indications of success here. Once this decision, this action decision is chosen. We have the five of swords and the king, the, the five of cups and the king of wands both sliding in like this. Did you see that? They both kind of slid in. So I do think there's some sadness here. There's probably some regret here and remorse, probably some hindsight kind of energy um, that needs to be moved on from. I, I feel with the five of cups, that's an energy that um, will, will maybe be helpful in the short term, but in the long term, the five of cups is an energy that does need to be moved away from moved on from the king of wands is here so whoever the, the king of wands is like an aries leo sag energy it's a fiery energy it's a creator energy it's a leader energy it's a presenter energy a performer type of energy a builder a rescuer type of energy um, it, it's really an energy that the king of wands has really taken a hit he's sideways here he, he's not really sure what to do um, and i think that he is somewhat regretting here with the five of cups um, this situation. So there is a king of wands here that's been slightly decompressed, slightly de deactivated. This king of wands is going to need to regain his confidence again if he's going to be as impactful as he, as he desires to be. He's going to need to move forward now from this regret and move, move into the upright and begin to create again begin to um, build again, because that's what the King of Wands does. He takes, King of Wands takes action in his environment to build and to construct and to solve and to, and to um, lead. He's like the Pied Piper kind of energy, the King of Wands is, right? He can step through fear. He can step into the unknown. But when he's sideways, that means he's taken a hit. He's taken a hit. So it looks like, um, there is going to be a situation where there's there's going to be indications of, of success here, messages that are coming in that that indicate now that there is going to be an improvement. Remember, we're looking at the next week or two, um, the next week or two, the energy of the next week or two. All right, let's move on now to the rest of this reading. Um, but I think sometimes going into these energies are really helpful. Um, sometimes we can skim over them and we can miss out on details. That's why I love this. It's like digging into the mystery of it solving a mystery that's what it feels like oh shoot i just put that energy all the way back oh what was it two of swords there we go okay so the strength energy i i think that we got i don't really sense a whole lot there um higher font and the magician hmm let's get a couple energies for the higher font and then i want to spend a few minutes with the magician energy um, tell us a little bit more about this structure, this system that you're that the Pisces are 
are starting to incorporate themselves into. Yeah, so so there is something here with, um, it has to do with the uh, um, stability. It has to do with finances. It has to do with um, really fear of consequences of something, unsure about your future, unsure about um, it just having a lack of, maybe even a lack of composure, something has really been stripped away from you. So, um, there is here with this Hierophant energy, um, some sort of toxic energy that is around it. That devil energy is still here. Something with this Hierophant energy, you are creating something here that's going, going to start blending in with it. It's almost like there needs to, there, there is going to be some sort of a, a change in the energy. There's going to be a change with this Hierophant energy. And how you begin to work with it, King of Swords. Seeing the big picture of it, making decisions. Now this can be a, human, a humanitarian group. This can be a, an Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Um, this is could be a court of law. The King of Swords could be an army. Um, the King of Swords could be a guard or a police officer or a judge or an attorney or even a doctor. Um, I feel like there's going to be careful decisions made. There's going to be careful decisions made because the King of Swords um, is, a, is a decision, is an energy that makes decisions. Um, it looks at everything, looks at the big picture, makes fair decisions, tries to be um, fair to everyone, tries to, this is a humanitarian energy as well. And I think with this Hierophant energy, this this um, society type of energy and structures within society, whether it's a religious group, a university system, a bit large corporate system, a government system, whatever it is, there has been um, this toxic energy, a fear energy around it, could be even control in your community. Um, and it looks like now there's going to be decisions made that are going to be fair. When the King of Swords shows up over a situation like this, it does seem like it will be resolved and it will be resolved in a fair way. Now, sometimes the King of Swords takes some time the King of Swords is not a quick energy. The Queen of Swords is much quicker. She's much quicker to shoot off her mouth, right? I'm Aquarius, I know. <laughs> Pisces, you also know. <laughs> you know, that's why we get along. Um, so the Queen of Swords can protect. She can she can say what she needs to say. The King of Swords is a little bit slower um, to make a decision and much more fair. So I like a lot that the King of Swords is here. The King of Swords came in the upright as well. So I do think the King of Swords is going to um, change this energy, make rulings on this energy, make makes careful decisions about this energy. Six of Pentacles, making it fair, making it equal. So I do feel like there's going to be a change in this higher font energy. Um, and, and there's going to be a, an energy of, of financial balance, generosity here. Um, it's, it's not the Ten of Pentacles, it's a Six of Pentacles. So it's not this uber quality or uber quantity, but it's something that's going to be fair or something that's going to be just enough, right? With the, with the Six of Pentacles. So um, I, I do think that this King of Swords is here to bring justice, to bring fairness, to bring equality in. Um, so let's move now into the Magician and see what we can find here with the Magician energy. So I'm interested. I feel like there's energy here that we need to discover. Okay, let's see what's here with the Magician. Magician energy. Tell us more about this Magician. I'm going to put him in the middle here. King of Wands, there he is. Magician energy. There you are, Pisces. You're in some sort of energy like the Eight of Wands. Damn, that's beautiful. There you go, getting to work, Pisces. I'm telling you. And it has something to do with communication. Remember, the Eight of Wands is taking some energy, whether it's words, whether it's something you're writing, um, whether it's something that you're typing. You're sending this energy. You're condensing it into something, and you're sending it. And there's a receiver who's going to receive it and take the energy and receive it. That's what the Eight of Wands is. This is bolts of energy, almost like lightning that you shoot into a distance. 
It's almost like remote healing can be the same way. Eight of Wands can be remote healing, where you send energy to someone or to something and it is received. So whatever you're doing, you're in action, you're communicating, you're you're getting your energy out there, you're you're working, you're 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 in action now to create something. You're inventing something. Um, the magician energy, remember, it is a busy energy. It's difficult to be in the magician energy. When we say magician, we we just, oh yeah, there's a magician. You're you're working on something to bring something into actuality. This is a lot of work, Pisces. The 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 magician energy is when we're in the magician energy, it takes creativity, it takes passion, it takes energy. That means we have to be eating good and sleeping well. Um, it takes clarity of mind and imagination. Right? It takes love for an inspiration for whatever you're creating, whatever you're doing. It takes a wholeness of a soul to, to create in such a powerful way. And here you are in this creator energy. This is creating. Look at these energies. This is the spark of energy right here. Look at, I mean, look at how the higher font matches as well. It's just really incredible. See what I mean? It's like something that's going to merge. It's going to be able to merge with the society. It's going to be able to merge with your outer world. So you're busy. You're taking action. You're stepping into this. Something has pushed you or something has initiated you to step into this situation, to communicate, to build it, to participate in it, to be a manufacturer of it. Whether it's a love relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's a new book, Whatever it is, you're taking action now and you're beginning to communicate. Now let's dig what I mean, I I can go forever, Pisces. <laughs> I can go forever. Uh, but I do have an extended reading to do and I can really um, only do this for about an hour and a half and then I lose my strength. So I have to kind of watch what I'm doing here. Um, eight of Wands energy. Tell me more about this Eight of Wands. Tell me more about this Eight of Wands. Seven of Swords. Two of Wands. High Priestess. Now this came in in the, in the reverse. So we're going to leave it in the reverse. I don't, now I'm going to put it in the upright, but we know it's in the reverse. It's easier for me to read the energy if it's in the upright, but we know it's in the reverse. So um, there's some communication here that's going out. Now you could have a King of Wands an Aries, Leo, Sag, masculine in your presence as well. So this could be a person that's in your world somehow, um, creating something. Could definitely be. Um, you'll know how it fits with you, but there's some communication going out and some activities here that, so, that show you're changing something. You're changing the way you've been doing something. You're creating a, a change in the plan. There's some strategy change. And this strategy change has been coming in because of some sort of initiation and the initiation was freaking painful that's why the seven of swords is a painful energy um it it is a it is something that happens to us that shocks us that where we can no longer deny something that we have not been looking at that we have been refusing to see or that we have been or where the truth has been hidden from us and when this realization is here there is nothing we can do except for change our strategy. And that moment of shock, that moment of, moment of realization is normally something that can really tear us apart, that can really scare us, that can really bring in um, a, a, an energy of fear or destabilization with the Seven of Swords. So there is some sort of communication or some sort of activities that are going on here with the King of Wands where he's communicating now that there is something that's going to be changed. There's a strategy change. It has to do with the mindset. It has to do with ideas and decisions. And there is now action, a choice that is being made. And this choice is being communicated with the, with the magician energy. So there is a communication now that is being sent out. Because when the high priestess is in reverse, it tells me that there is now communication. What once, what was once held within, once that was that which was held within as answers were trying to be found. And this is a very Pisces energy too. 
um, are now being released and actions are being taken. So this King of Wands is busy working to create something new here with the magician. What else does the King of Wands have to say, please? What else does the King of Wands have to say? What else does the King of Wands have to say? Ace of Swords. Can no longer deny it. And there could be a great idea here as well. There could be a powerful decision that's made, a great idea coming in. Um, there could be a victory here that the King of Wands is feeling. Like, even though this has been painful, um, this could be ultimately something that the King of Wands is realizing could actually be something that could be quite helpful. Right? Because this King of Wands has had to d dig deep here. If this is not you, this could be you here in the High Priestess. You here having some sort of decision or action change that you're participating in. However you're fitting with this. But this King of Wands has definitely been, had some sort of a realization here that is a claim to something. Right? It's something coming in that is a powerful kind of claim or realization or decision that is going to bring um, something significant to a life path. Remember, the King of Wands is a life walker. He's an action taker. He's on some sort of a journey. Whatever this is, there's going to be impact to this journey that he's on. Ten of Cups here. He's seeing where his happiness lies. He's seeing where his fulfillment is. He's seeing where his togetherness is. There's truth now. There is truth to this with the King of Wands. There is a yes. Yes to happiness. Yes to fulfillment. Yes to bliss. It will take this change. It, will, it took this pain to see it. It's going to be require this revision in life. It's going to require some changes in how we move forward. And there's some sort of communication, um, very Pisces energy here. Um, and this is in the reverse. So there is now a letting go of what was once held within, a letting out of once that, what, that which was held within. Wow. Well, Pisces, it's hard to stop when I get going. I'm going to have to stop King of Cups. Damn. Pisces, this is how your guys' readings are with me. It's so fun. It's so fun. And I, I don't mean that this is fun. The Seven of Swords is not fun. But it's it's so interesting to have these energies just, there you are, taking action. Taking action coming out of a place of reflection, coming out of a place of inward realization and inward, inward turmoil and um, finding your answers from within and then taking a action out in your, out in your in exterior world. That's beautiful, Pisces. Really beautiful. So my friends, I'm going to move into the extended now. We'll take this situation out towards kind of see how it's doing then. Um, we'll look at the energies of the people around you and see how these people, the energy of, the, of these people connect in with Pisces and their perspective of Pisces, just to kind of get an idea of how, how they feel about you energetically, maybe what they think about you energetically. So um, we'll step right into that. Thank you, my dear friends, for being here. It's always beautiful um, to, to be in your energy, Pisces. And I really commend you for all of your hard work. Um, and, and for your dedication to um, whatever this is that you are working to change and invent in your in your life. It is, it is beautiful to see. And I wish you all the best, my beautiful friends. Thank you.